The Endless Library The library was vast, its shelves stretching endlessly in every direction, towering above with row upon row of books. The dim light filtered down from high windows, casting long, soft shadows across the polished wooden floors. The air smelled faintly of old paper and leather, a familiar scent that lingered in the stillness. Clara sat at a small wooden table near the center of the room, her hands resting lightly on the cover of an open book. She had been reading for hours, or maybe it had only been minutes. Time was difficult to measure in the library, where the silence was so complete that even the ticking of a clock would have felt out of place. There was no need to keep track of time here. The library existed outside of it. She turned the page slowly, her eyes scanning the words, though the meaning of the text seemed to slip away as soon as she read it. That was part of the charm of the library. The books were endless, and the stories within them were soft and gentle, never demanding too much attention. Some were simple accounts of quiet lives in distant villages, others were more detailed explorations of landscapes and seasons. None of them were particularly exciting, but that was why Clara liked them. The shelves around her stretched into the distance, each one filled with books bound in faded covers, their titles worn smooth by time. She knew she could spend a lifetime here and never read them all, and the thought comforted her. There was no rush, no need to finish one book before moving on to the next. The library would always be here, waiting for her, its shelves full of stories she had yet to discover. Occasionally, Clara would rise from her seat and wander between the shelves, running her fingers along the spines of the books. Some of the volumes were thick and heavy, while others were small, delicate things that seemed almost too fragile to touch. The titles were written in languages she sometimes couldn't understand, but that didn't matter. The books weren't meant to be understood as much as they were meant to be experienced. After a while, Clara would return to her table, a new book in hand, and settle back into her chair. The soft rustle of pages turning was the only sound in the vast, quiet space. She would lose herself in the words once again, letting the gentle rhythm of the text carry her away. And so, the hours passed in the library, though Clara never noticed their passing. The books were endless, and the quiet stillness of the library offered a kind of peace that was hard to find anywhere else. The Foggy Road The road was long and straight, cutting through a dense fog that hung thick and heavy in the air. The landscape on either side was barely visible, just vague shapes looming in the mist, trees, perhaps, were distant hills. The fog muted all sound creating a deep, quiet stillness that made every step feel like it echoed in a dream. Tom walked along the road at a steady pace, his footsteps soft on the damp earth. He had been walking for what felt like hours, though the fog made it impossible to tell how far he had come or how much farther he had to go. The road stretched on endlessly ahead of him, disappearing into the mist. There were no landmarks, no signs, no indication that the road would ever end. The air was cool and slightly damp, clinging to his skin and hair. Occasionally, a soft breeze would stir the fog, making the shapes in the distance shift and change, but the road itself remained unchanged. Tom didn't mind. The fog was comforting in its way, wrapping the world in a soft, impenetrable blanket. There was nothing to see, nothing to distract him from the quiet rhythm of his own footsteps. He passed a small, weathered bench on the side of the road, though he couldn't recall ever having seen it before. It looked as though it had been there for years, its wooden slats worn smooth by time and weather. Tom considered sitting for a moment, but decided against it. There was no need to stop, and besides, the road was calling him forward, though he didn't know why. As he walked, his thoughts began to drift, slipping in and out of focus. The fog had a way of dulling the mind, making everything seem distant and vague. He thought about the road, about how it seemed to stretch on forever, and wondered if he would ever reach its end. But even that thought felt too sharp, too direct, and soon it faded, leaving only the soft, soothing repetition of his steps. The fog thickened as he walked, wrapping the world in an even deeper silence. The shapes in the mist became more indistinct, and soon Tom couldn't see anything at all beyond the few feet of road in front of him. But that didn't matter. He would keep walking, and the road would keep stretching on, endless and quiet. The quiet garden. The garden was enclosed by tall, weathered stone walls, 
their surfaces covered in moss and ivy. Inside, neat rows of flower beds stretched out in every direction, filled with colorful blooms that swayed gently in the breeze. The garden was peaceful, almost eerily so, with no sound but the soft rustle of leaves and the occasional chirp of a distant bird. Lydia walked slowly along the gravel path that wound through the garden, her footsteps barely making a sound. The air was warm, with the faint scent of lavender and roses drifting on the breeze. She had been tending this garden for years, though it required little care. The flowers bloomed on their own, the trees provided shade, and the grass grew in a perfect, even carpet. Everything was in its place, and nothing ever seemed to change. She stopped by a small stone bench under a large oak tree and sat down, folding her hands in her lap. The garden stretched out before her, a sea of soft green and vibrant colors, and beyond the walls, the sky was a bright, cloudless blue. But the world outside the garden didn't matter. The walls kept it at bay, leaving Lydia with only the quiet, orderly beauty of her garden. Time moved slowly here, marked only by the changing light as the sun rose and set. Lydia would spend her days walking the garden paths, sometimes stopping to pull a stray weed or trim a wayward branch, though there was little real work to be done. The garden seemed to take care of itself, growing and flourishing in its own quiet way. Sometimes, she would pause to listen to the distant hum of bees or watch as a butterfly flitted from one flower to another. But these were small, simple pleasures, and Lydia took them as they came, without any great sense of urgency or excitement. The garden was her world, and it was enough. As the afternoon wore on, Lydia rose from the bench and resumed her walk. The path led her past the rose bushes, their blossoms heavy with dew, and then through a shaded grove of trees where the air was cool and fresh. The garden was large, and though she had walked it many times before, she never grew tired of it. Each flower, each tree, each blade of grass was familiar, and yet there was always something soothing in their repetition. By the time she returned to her bench, the sun had begun to dip toward the horizon, casting long shadows across the garden. Lydia sat down once again, watching as the light faded and the colors of the garden softened into twilight. The garden would be the same tomorrow, and the day after that, and that was exactly how she wanted it. The train to nowhere. The train moved steadily along the tracks, its gentle rocking motion creating a soothing rhythm. Outside the window, the landscape rolled by slowly, a blur of green fields, distant hills, and the occasional cluster of trees. The sky above was overcast, the clouds thick and low, though no rain fell. Arthur sat in his seat, staring out the window, though his mind wasn't really focused on the view. The train had been moving for as long as he could remember, and he had long since lost track of where it had come from or where it was going. There were no stations, no stops, just the endless stretch of tracks and the slow, steady progress of the train. The carriage was empty, save for Arthur. The soft hum of the train's engine and the occasional rattle of the wheels on the tracks were the only sounds. He had a book in his lap, but he hadn't opened it. There was no need. The train ride itself was enough to occupy his thoughts, or at least to let them drift. The landscape outside never really changed. The fields rolled by, the trees swayed in the breeze, but there was nothing distinctive about any of it. It was as though the world outside the train was stuck in a kind of gentle, unending loop, always the same, always just out of reach. Arthur leaned back in his seat, closing his eyes for a moment. The rocking of the train was comforting, like being cradled in a soft, steady rhythm. He didn't care where the train was going, or if it ever reached its destination. The journey itself was enough. There was something peaceful about the way the train moved through the world, always in motion but never seeming to get anywhere. After a while, Arthur opened his eyes and glanced at the clock on the wall of the carriage. It was ticking softly, but the hands never seemed to move. Time, like the landscape, was stuck in its own quiet cycle. Arthur smiled faintly to himself and returned his gaze to the window. The train would keep moving, and he would keep riding it, lost in the gentle rhythm of the journey. The waiting room. The waiting room was small, with pale yellow walls and a soft grey carpet that muffled any footsteps. There were a few chairs arranged in a neat row along the wall, each one identical with a soft cushion and a wooden frame that creaked slightly if you shifted your weight. 
A low table in the center of the room held a stack of old magazines, their covers slightly curled from age, though no one ever seemed to read them. Daniel sat in one of the chairs, his hands resting in his lap. He had been sitting there for what felt like hours, though there was no clock in the room to tell him how much time had passed. The only sound was the faint hum of the overhead lights, which flickered occasionally but never went out completely. There was nothing to do but wait, though Daniel wasn't sure what he was waiting for. He had arrived at the waiting room one day, taken a seat, and since then, he had remained. The door across from him was closed, and no one had come through it in all the time he had been there. The door he had entered through had long since disappeared from his memory. Now, there was just the room, the chairs, the magazines, and the hum of the lights. He shifted slightly in his seat, listening to the quiet creak of the chair beneath him. The air was cool, almost still, and nothing ever seemed to change. Occasionally, Daniel would glance at the magazines on the table, wondering if he should pick one up, but he never did. The thought of breaking the stillness of the room felt wrong, as though the waiting itself was the only thing that mattered. The room, like time itself, stretched endlessly. There was no rush, no need to leave. The waiting was comfortable, almost soothing. Daniel let his eyes drift to the floor, watching the faint pattern of the carpet as it blurred in his vision. He could wait forever if he had to. The Lighthouse Keeper The lighthouse stood on the edge of the rocky cliff, overlooking the vast, empty sea. Its whitewashed walls gleamed faintly in the pale light of the overcast sky, and the tall tower stretched up toward the clouds, its beacon ever turning, though there were no ships to guide. The wind howled softly around the lighthouse, tugging at the long grass that grew in patches along the cliffs. Henry, the lighthouse keeper, sat at his small wooden desk, staring out the window at the endless horizon. His hands rested idly on the pages of an open book, though he had long since stopped reading. The words no longer held any meaning for him. The days had blended together, each one identical to the last, marked only by the slow, steady sweep of the lighthouse beam as it turned, night after night. The sea below was calm, as it always was. The waves rolled gently toward the shore, crashing softly against the rocks before retreating back into the deep. Henry had lived in the lighthouse for as long as he could remember. There had once been a time when ships passed by, when sailors relied on the light to guide them safely to shore. But those days were gone now, and the sea was empty, save for the occasional seagull that drifted lazily on the wind. Henry stood and walked slowly to the window, his boots making a soft thud on the wooden floor. He stared out at the water, his eyes tracing the line where the sea met the sky. There was nothing out there, just the endless expanse of blue and grey, stretching on forever. The lighthouse had been his home for years, and though nothing ever changed, Henry found comfort in the routine. Each day, he lit the beacon, made his rounds, and waited for the night to fall. The world outside the lighthouse had faded into a distant memory, and Henry no longer wondered about the life he had left behind. The days were long, the nights even longer, but Henry was content. The sea was calm, the light was steady, and the world moved on without him. The Desert Walk The desert stretched out before her, an endless expanse of golden sand dunes rolling into the horizon. The sky above was a clear, pale blue, and the sun hung high casting a soft warmth over the land. The wind whispered gently through the dunes, shifting the sand ever so slightly, but the desert remained as still and unchanging as ever. Maria walked slowly, her footsteps barely leaving a trace in the soft sand. She had been walking for hours, though she didn't feel tired. The desert had a way of making time disappear, stretching the moments into infinity. There was no destination, no place she needed to reach. The walk itself was the journey, and Maria was content to wander. The silence of the desert was absolute. No birds called from the sky, no insects buzzed among the sand. It was as though the world had fallen into a deep, peaceful sleep, leaving Maria as the only living soul in this vast, empty place. She could feel the soft breeze against her skin, hear the faint sound of the wind as it moved through the dunes, but otherwise, the world was quiet. Maria paused at the top of a dune, looking out over the landscape. The desert stretched out in every direction, an endless sea of sand that seemed to go on forever, 
She had no sense of how far she had come or how far she had left to go, but it didn't matter. The desert was her home now, and there was no need to leave. She continued walking, her feet sinking into the soft sand with each step. The sun moved slowly across the sky, casting long shadows across the dunes as it began its descent toward the horizon. The colors of the desert shifted with the light, turning from gold to orange, then to deep, dusky pink as the day faded into twilight. As night fell, the stars began to appear, twinkling faintly in the clear sky. Maria stopped again, looking up at the vast expanse of stars that stretched above her. The desert was still and quiet, and the only sound was the soft whisper of the wind. Maria smiled to herself. The desert would always be here, waiting for her, unchanged and infinite. The Clockmaker's Workshop The clockmaker's workshop was small and cluttered, filled with the soft ticking of dozens of clocks, each one marking the passage of time in its own steady rhythm. The walls were lined with shelves, every inch of space occupied by timepieces of all shapes and sizes, grandfather clocks, pocket watches, wall clocks, and delicate wristwatches, all ticking in harmony, though each was set to a slightly different time. Oliver, the clockmaker, sat at his workbench, carefully adjusting the gears of a small, ornate pocket watch. His hands moved slowly, deliberately, as though he had all the time in the world. And perhaps he did. The hours in the workshop passed quietly, each one blending into the next, marked only by the gentle chimes of the clocks as they struck the hour. The air in the workshop was cool, filled with the faint scent of polished wood and brass. Outside, the world moved on, but inside, time seemed to flow differently. The clocks ticked on, but the minutes and hours no longer held any meaning for Oliver. He had spent a lifetime repairing clocks, setting the gears in motion, but time itself had become a distant concept, something he observed rather than experienced. He set the watch down carefully on the table and leaned back in his chair, listening to the chorus of ticking that filled the room. It was a sound he had grown accustomed to over the years, one that brought him a sense of calm and order. The clocks kept time, but they didn't demand it. They simply marked its passage, quiet and constant. Oliver glanced at the large grandfather clock that stood in the corner of the room, its pendulum swinging slowly back and forth. It had been one of the first clocks he had ever repaired, and it still kept perfect time, though Oliver no longer checked to see if it matched the world outside. Time in the workshop was its own thing, steady and unchanging, just like the clocks themselves. The clockmaker smiled faintly to himself and returned to his work, the soft ticking of the clocks surrounding him like a lullaby.